Okay, this is your version of today for this week, and we're taking a look at the life of our Lord in the Passion Week. Um, how fearless he was when he went to Jerusalem. And the question that I want to kind of have us think about is, what did Jesus know that we didn't? What did he do that we don't do? Because if I knew I was going to die by going to a town, I wouldn't go. So, so in, in preparation to think through a verse, I'm, I think is very key. We need to consider, Jesus told his disciples at least three times that he was going to Jerusalem to die. And they didn't get it. I mean, up until Monday, Thursday, when they celebrated the Last Supper together, they didn't get it. They, their thoughts were not at all centered, oh, Jesus didn't come to Jerusalem to die. In fact, they just experienced Palm Sunday. Jesus looked like he was going to be king. And they were arguing about positions in the royal leadership of the new and coming nation. They weren't thinking death at all. But also, how could Jesus go to Jerusalem knowing that he would die if he did? Now that's a puzzlement. I mean, he was absolutely fearless. So what did Jesus know that we don't? That's what we're going to take a look at. We're going to look at this passage in Matthew 26. It's just amazing because after the Last Supper, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And, of course, Judas shows up with a Roman cohort to have Jesus arrested. Peter, wanting to be the bold hero, steps up with his sword, tries to take off a guy's head. He ducks and loses his ear. And immediately the response of Jesus is, Put your sword back into its place. For all those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Or do you not think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once put at my disposal 12 legions of angels? Now, a legion would be 6,000 soldiers and 12 legions would be 72,000 soldiers. You say, well, that's not very many. Good night. There are a lot of armies that are more than 72,000. Well, one angel in the Old Testament took out 185,000 people in one night. So those 12 legions could have taken care of the whole population of the earth at that time pretty easily, pretty handily. That would have been all he needed. And so we have to take a look at this passage. God, I mean, Jesus was fearless. So what's the question that's in this text? Well, the question I'm going to use is, where did Jesus put his confidence? He's telling Peter to put his sword away. So don't you know? So where did Jesus put his confidence? And where he put his confidence is, he put his confidence in God and he feared him alone. Because he knew that the Heavenly Father could put all the angels he ever needed at his disposal. So when we put this into a spiritual principle, put the question and the answer together, we can come up with a statement, the key to being fearless is knowing and trusting God in full obedience to his word. Now, I'm borrowing from a verse that follows afterwards, where Jesus mentions that the prophets and what they said have to be true. But Jesus' fearlessness came from knowing and trusting his Father in full obedience to his word. I believe it accurately reflects the text, and I also actually believe it actually accurately describes the dynamics of the storyline and what's going on here. So this principle right here is key. The key to being fearless is knowing and trusting God in full obedience to his word. There are some questions that we need to ask ourselves in application, and um, you can come up with your own. That's fine. Uh, but here's some that hit me. One, what do I worry about? And what occupies my mind when I have time to myself? If I'm worrying, I'm not fearless. Second, with whom do I share deeply and what do I share? What are my conversation themes? What do I talk about? What do I want? What don't I want? And are they connected? I want to challenge you that they are. Our lust and our fear can go together. 
Four, what do I fear? And do I see the connection between what I want and what I fear? Five, if I wanted to please God more than anything in my life, what would I fear? I want you to think about that for a moment. And I'm going to give you a, a short answer. You would fear not pleasing God. If you wanted to please God more than anything in your life, you would fear not pleasing Him. And that's why you would be in full compliance with His Word and do everything you could. Six, when do I pull out my sword? Okay, now this is, this is a question, but I pull out my sword whenever I'm fearful. And I'm fearful of losing something. And I don't know what it is Peter was after, but he wasn't after what Christ was after, that's for sure. And accordingly, what will be the end of me? Because what I pull out, my those that live by the sword will perish by the sword. Peter's priorities were not right. My priorities, if they're not right, they will be the end of me. Am I truly fearless? And what would fearless look like in my life? Good question. If I'm not fearless, could I have an idol? You can't be fearless with an idol. Because that God cannot save you. How is God instructing my heart to love him? And who has he entrusted to me? That's a thought to think about, okay? Who did Jesus go to Jerusalem for? Himself or me? Well, obviously, he didn't go there for himself. Did he see us in his mind's eye as he was going to Jerusalem? Maybe that's why he had to go to Jerusalem. And can I be fearless for him and those he is giving and will continue to give? To me. Now, these are just some questions to consider. I want you to come up with your own if you can, and I want you to just think about in a culture, we're living in a culture that is absolutely freaking out in fear of everything. We need some fear, fearless people, and God has called us to be that person. So, God bless, and hope to see you on Sunday.